It seems like history always finds a way to repeat itself. However, the way it is repeating itself in America could lead to uncontrollable circumstances that could easily or eventually lead to its demise. America should take a look at the events that occurred during China's Cultural Revolution that could help it avoid negative outcomes as a result of its own cultural and class revolution. Welcome to Four Seas One Family, where expats, immigrants, and migrants can share and learn about life experiences abroad. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan, and I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey, and welcome to the show. I've lived and studied in both China and Taiwan. I have a background in not only the Chinese language and history, but also a clear understanding of the culture as well. Recently, I've sat down and had very long conversations with people born in China who have been through China's Cultural Revolution and lost friends and family members because of it and other failed social experiments. Today I am seeing America going through many of the scenarios people in China went through. And this is causing me to worry deeply about how Americans are interacting with each other. I'm finding it hard to admit that most Americans aren't able to see the path their nation is taking. Just like during China's Cultural Revolution, people in China, well, they were being coached into becoming overzealous concerning how they feel about their lives or how they feel their lives were being restricted. The young generation in China felt that they had no power to control their future because of a ruling class holding them back. They felt disillusioned. They desperately wanted social change and political change by any means necessary, which is exactly how many young Americans feel today. During these types of social and political struggles, many people die. Don't forget that during America's own social and political struggles from the 1600s up to the 1960s, policies and mistakes were made based on a person's sex and race, and this caused certain classes of people to be denied rights, locked into or sold into servitude, and in many cases, die. I'm talking about slavery, Jim Crow, the internment of people of Japanese ethnicity, voting regulations, and much more. Much like during the Cultural Revolution in China, many people in America, especially the younger generation, feel a need to reset America's social and political norms. During China's Cultural Revolution, people who were landlords, businessmen, or educators were seen as counter-revolutionaries who used their unlimited resources to suppress the rights of those who didn't have access to the same resources or had family lineages that gave them prestige or high status. Many people who accumulated wealth and descendants of landlords, business owners, did use their financial proudness to control those who had little or no family resources or names that offered economic or social privilege. Many Americans working several jobs or unemployed see rich Americans and descendants of affluent families the same way. Now, beyond stripping the wealthy of their financial resources and material possessions, many disillusioned Chinese began forcing these now disgraced individuals, who are now referred to as counter-revolutionaries, to confess to using their privileged positions and family ties to subjugate and violate the less fortunate people. These counter-revolutionaries were forced to do manual labor and repeatedly verbally and sometimes physically tormented, and in some cases until death during these so-called struggle sessions. Many of these young, energetic, and enthusiastic people, now called Red Guards, were even willing to accuse their own relatives of being counter-revolutionaries. Now compare these situations to the events now happening in America today concerning the cancel culture, social justice initiatives, and even the Black Lives Matters movement. And on a side note, 
many people taking part in the Black Lives Matter movement are just frustrated by what they see is happening to Black people in the U.S., but can't see the direction it is heading. They don't understand that the movement doesn't have a central core responsible for the policies presented. Most importantly, they may not understand the Marxist ideologies held by the founders of BLM, who openly say they are trained Marxists. I wonder if most people taking part in BLM know what Marxism is, or the underlying ideas behind the Marxist ideology. Also, identity politics is taking America in, in a direction that forces it to tear itself apart from the inside. Governments that see America as their enemy and want to see America's demise want Americans to do precisely this. There is also a problem with how the critical race theory, or CRT, is being interpreted in the United States. It has transformed into being more about turning people of different races and ethnicities against each other, not about racial tolerance. This analogy follows the line said by Chinese philosopher Sun Tzu, who said, allow your enemies their space to hate. They will destroy themselves in the process. It's also easy to see how memes and slogans found on social media ignite emotions that cause people to react in ways that they usually wouldn't. These memes and slogans can easily be compared to or matched to those headlined during the Cultural Revolution in China. Now, could social and political disturbances in America today lead to situations much like those during the Cultural Revolution in China that forced China into a downward social and political spiral? I think Americans should take the time to look at the events that occurred in China during its Cultural Revolution and imagine how the current situation in the United States could also lead to a deterioration of social and political morals that could lead to a catastrophic and irreversible decline that could destroy America's social protections, prestige, and power abroad. And after speaking to Chinese people both here in Taiwan and in America, who left China during and after the Cultural Revolution, I noted that they also fear that America is heading into the same catastrophic direction China followed from 1966 to 1976. They fear that the social, financial, and political events causing so much violence, racism, and destruction may affect America's global, economic, and social position and cause countless ill-informed and innocent people to die. It's heartening to see how the media in America is exacerbating disturbances taking place instead of promoting ways of finding how to solve these complicated issues. Today, the world is pitying America. Many Americans feel that someone, some group, or some other nation is the root cause of their social, financial, and political decline. Some people blame another group or groups for limiting their access to resources, which is the case in many situations. However, also in many cases, the cause really is in the person or group of people complaining and or protesting. In other cases, another country may become the target for blame and sometimes for good reasons. This blame may be because of another country's politics, and in some cases, the real underlining reason is the fear of another nation becoming more dominant in some way. For example, some American business leaders fear China's technological advancements and propagate the view that China is stealing American intellectual properties. And this is most likely true. But tell me, how many of the technological advancements we now see in America may have come from an idea stolen or originated from someplace else? Remember, the cotton gin may not have been invented by Eli Whitney. He most likely may have stolen the idea from someone or someplace else in Europe. And we all know how the cotton gin perpetuated slavery in America. I'm just saying. America isn't perfect. 
and has made mistakes domestically and abroad. However, Americans who have fought over the years to ensure that every citizen had the same rights, protections, all under the law, should be honored by most Americans because their efforts were looking towards a better, more prosperous future. We owe it to them to make sure that their dreams comes to fruition. Now, remember after the Cultural Revolution in China and the ruling elite or counter-revolutionaries were disbanded, the Red Guards took over China's government. Many of these Red Guards are still in powerful positions in China's government today. Now, is this the roadmap Americans should take? Americans must be careful what they wish for. Keep in mind that this current changing cycle in America can bring new beginnings that could quickly become dangerous. My questions to you today are, what steps can America take to prevent the same mistakes that occurred during China's Cultural Revolution? What actions should leaders in America take that could prevent hostile forces from infecting American freedoms and liberties. If you're watching us on YouTube, please leave us a comment if you have anything you would like to share concerning this topic. If you found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. For Four Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to take care of yourself wherever you are in the world.